Yes. Yes. All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day and we're just going to be, oh, we're going to be vlogging like crazy. I got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about. I'm pretty excited about this vlog. We're going to be covering a, we're going to be covering a lot of stuff, including some interesting first impressions. Uh, we're going to be talking about, uh, well, you know, we'll just, I guess we'll just kind of get to it uh, as we get to it. Let me get my vlog notes out here. Let me get my vlog notes out here. Um, the first thing, the first thing I wanted to cover was okay. So there's two kind of uh, strange things that have happened uh, in the vaping world. Um, I make it a point to stay completely, completely out of drama. I just, I don't have time for it. Who has, who has time for drama? Nobody has time for it. I hate it. I hate being involved in it. I hate hearing about it. I hate being asked about it. Blah 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 blah. blah. So I I. Uh, I, I, someone had mentioned that uh, indoor smokers had mentioned me in a video. And so I'm kind of like, you know, I get fascinated. I'm like, huh, that's, eh, that's interesting. I wonder what he said. So I go to watch his video and, you know, indoor smokers is like, he's out of his mind. He's just crazy. He's this long haired, just vaping, just crazy person. He's out of his mind. And so in his video, uh, someone, a subscriber, had said uh, something. Something they, a subscriber had said something bad about indoor smokers, and in that same sentence, they had said something good about me. They said, "Oh, I would never watch indoor smokers. I only watch Grim Green. Grim Green's awesome." And this used to happen a lot, and it hasn't happened in a while, but it used to happen a lot between me and Phil. People, people seem to want to take sides on YouTube reviewers or YouTube whatever vaping uh, personalities. People want, seem to want to take sides, and it makes no sense. Um, people would leave comments on my videos and say, "Oh, your videos are so shitty. I only watch Phil's videos." I'm like, "Oh, well, okay." And then people would do the same thing on on Phil's videos. And then there was one time I remember. I think it was at Vape Bash where I actually talked to Phil about this. And I said, do you ever notice? No, 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 it was VaporCon. That's when I talked to Phil and I said, D do you ever notice that people like are choosing sides and trying to like pit us against each other? Like what is happening? Why do people do that? I will still never understand why people do that. I have nothing against indoor smokers. He is a full-time YouTuber. He is uh, very, very popular. He is doing his own thing. It is none of my business. I don't, he can do whatever he wants. Um, he has a mountain of subscribers. He's got a very, very loyal following. It is perfectly acceptable to watch both Indoor Smokers and Grim Green and P. Basardo and Suck My Mod and Ruby Roo while you're at it. None of us have any sort of beef with anybody else there's no reason why you should go on, on on one of my videos and say that you only watch my videos and indoor smokers sucks or you only watch my videos and p basardo sucks that's not a thing that is of any importance to me there's no value added there i don't read your comment and go yeah you should be watching my videos because p basardo does suck i would never say that i think uh we're all on the same team here and so I think it was really weird that someone went on uh, on an indoor smokers video and was like oh your videos suck I only watch grim green videos and I'm thinking that is ridiculous why would I don't I don't get that I don't get that I I and I don't get that maybe just because I would never do that I would never I would never do that uh, to any YouTubers, but I'm trying to think of an instance when I would do that in any other aspect of my life. Like if I wouldn't go to a uh, to a to a Anthrax show and be like, "You guys suck. I only listen to Metallica." Why they don't care that you're at their show? They don't care. Metallica and Anthrax don't hate each other. They're just both bands. You know, it's like uh, it just drives me nuts. It just it just drives me nuts. It drives me so nuts that I feel like I need to take a toot here. I got these red drip tips from uh, from District 5. I don't know if you can see them. They kind of look like the uh, the Cherry Vape Cloud Chaser drip tips. Um, they're 
press fit. Look at that bore. That is just amazing. I love to just uh, dump juice in there. I don't even drip. I just, I basically just pour. Like I just empty the empty the tube of juice into there. Um, drip tips are pretty rad. Uh, this is what I've been vaping. Uh, Pretty pretty regularly. This is uh, the, that new District Five tip. Like I said, uh, pardon me, Mako RDA, uh, Petri from Dot Mod. I got some Cape Cod polishing cloths, and I shined it all up. And oh, it's just it just looks so sexy, and it just works uh, so well. I think this is a 0 0.17 ohm build on this particular atomizer. And it's good, uh, and it's really, really good. Um, I do have some beer to talk about. Of course, we'll do first impressions. Of course, we'll do shout outs. Of course, we will do retro vaping because I got it all sitting right here. And this one, I actually might be able to vape this week. Um, before we get into any of that, I do want to address one other thing. I, in my last vlog, I had uh, I had mentioned something about Raven vapes and how he had kind of uh, come back recently and it kind of felt it kind of felt awkward it kind of felt a little bit forced a little bit like a fame grab and um he uploaded a vlog recently and kind of kind of kind of reminded me of uh of our history together and he's absolutely right there's there's a huge history there with me and raven uh it's been maybe maybe the most rewarding uh, friendship that I've ever been in as well as possibly the most volatile friendship that I've ever been in um, when when people are are you know they spend so much time together and then they start going in in somewhat different directions but still in the same direction you know what I mean like there was a point and it might have been it might have been after we did the tat four um, where we hooked a hooked an atomizer up to my car heater. It might have been after the bro cry. It was it was somewhere around there where we were both going in the same direction and he kinda he kinda started going this way and then going up. And you know, he's absolutely right. I I feel like I owe him an apology for the things that I said. Um but I still kind of mean the things that I said. Um we do have a history together, and a lot of what he said did hit me in the feels. I did fail really bad at getting him an ego battery while he was in prison. Um, but he did remind me of the good times. The Tat 1 uh, with the boiler and uh, that bacon menthol juice. I mean, those were those were good times that I, I, I hold on to very fondly. And... Uh, you know, we do have a history together. And like I said, I feel like I owe him an apology, but I still, I still kind of believe, uh, but I kind of still stand by what I said earlier. And you never know, you know, uh, in the vape world, uh, when you're going to separate and then reconnect with people again. So hopefully someday, um, Raven and I can, uh, Raven and I can hash this out and, you know, try to honestly remember our history and why we became, uh, why we became friends in the first place. And, uh, I might not, uh, you know, I might not understand what Raven's doing. You know, I can't do those advanced coil builds that he does. Um, but, uh, but that doesn't mean that he, he doesn't have a right to do it. So I think that's all. I think that's all I'm gonna say. I think that's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, maybe someday we can reconnect, uh, and maybe maybe we can do the uh, maybe we can do the Tat Five. Maybe we can do up a new uh, a new sort of advanced freestyle vapor thing that uh, you know it it could be a thing. It could be a thing. I don't know. That's all I really have to say about that. Uh, so before we get to the beer, before we get to the beer, um, 
I do want to uh, I do want to give a shout out to Mr. Blue Collar Vapor. I met him up in uh, up at the Oregon Vape Festival, and uh, he sent me a message on Facebook. Uh, and I'll post a link in the description, as I always do, to Kasa.org, where you can see the call to actions. But Moth 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 County, Portland, Oregon, just passed an amendment adding vaping to the Clean Air Act. Bummer days to the Clean Air Act with no exemption for vape shops, which means that if you go into a vape shop in Multmouth County, Portland, Oregon, you cannot vape inside of a vape shop. So in Southern California, they have a Clean Air Act where you can't, uh, you know, smoke in public or 20 feet from a door or this, that, and the other, but they have exceptions for tobacco shops Um, down this way uh, I walk past it a lot there's a cigar store and inside the cigar store there are always people smoking cigars even though you can't smoke indoors they have an exception an exemption for the cigar store so that you can smoke cigars inside of a cigar store I think that's ridiculous that they did not make an exception for vape shops you can't vape inside of a vape shop in uh, in Portland, Oregon, in this certain county that I can't pronounce, Multmouth County, um, in Portland, Oregon. I think that's just ridiculous. Thank you, Blue Collar Vapor. Uh, keep doing your thing, man. Thank you for sending that my way. And hopefully, uh, hopefully the Pink Lung Brigade, hopefully uh, Casa, hopefully, hopefully the vapors in Portland, Oregon, can actually uh, can actually get up there and uh, and do something. But I'm dying to try this beer. I am just dying to try this beer. Um, this beer. Didn't score very high on the Beer Advocate. I still had to buy it. So this is, this is called Smaug Stout. (laughs) From The Hobbit, this is called Smaug Stout. uh, Brewed by Fishtail Ales. And one of the reasons I had to pick this up was my buddy Brandon, whom we call Meat. We have uh, a, a, just a mountain of Smaug jokes. And I don't exactly know how this started, how we have so many inside jokes about Smaug, but we used to talk about like, when we used to go to the gym, we would talk about lifting, and you know, when you're doing too much, you have to channel Smaug, and you sprout Smaug wings, and you, I don't know, I don't, it was a weird time, man. And so I saw this uh, at the world market, and I just started laughing so hard, I'm like, Dude, I have to buy this Smaug Stout. I don't even care if it's good. I just have to buy it. And I just have to drink it uh, in honor of my buddy Meat, uh, who uh, who actually moved up there to uh, to Washington, back home to Washington. So it is dark. Uh, it is basically motor oil in a cup, very dark tan head. I'm drinking this out of my favorite fuck yeah pint glass, which I'm sure they don't watch my videos anymore, but Slip and V, uh, I, I love you guys. Shout out to you. Uh, they bought me this, uh, one of my favorite cups of all time. It just says fuck yeah, and it's a green uh, pint glass. So let's try this Smog Stout. I'm going to click over to uh, I'm gonna click over to Beer Advocate, Fish Brewing Company. It scored an 82, which means it's a good uh, in their eyes. Uh, let's look at the top reviewers. Uh, pours an opaque opaque black. Yeah, I think he could have just said it pours like motor oil. Dark, foamy, foamy khaki head. Settles, blah, blah, blah. Foamy curtain laces the glass. Smells of dark roasted malts, cocoa, char, and slightly smoked chili aromas. Tastes as much, uh, tastes much of the same. Smoked cocoa flavors. The finish there is a mild amount of roasted bitterness and chili heat on the palate with each sip. So this is a spicy beer, apparently. The beer has a lower level of carbonation with a slightly crisp and medium body mouthfeel. Overall, it's a good beer with a nice mixture of smoky qualities and chili heat. Chili heat, which makes sense because in the uh, Tolkien world, uh, Lord of the Rings and what have you, um, Smaug or Smaug. <laughs> Smaug is a dragon, so dragons breathe fire, fire, chilies, spicy. It, it makes sense in my head. Let's try some of this meat. Here's to you. Here's a Smaug Stout. It smells like a, there is a lot of cocoa chocolate kind of flavor going on. It's not very carbonated. It is very, very smoky. There is a little bit of, that is so strange. There is like a little bit of chili, like spicy, 
Wow, that is so strange. Very, very smoky coffee. Uh, it tastes like uh, it tastes like this coffee or this 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 beer was brewed in a campfire ashes. Like it has that strong, like smoky, smoky flavor. You know when you go camping and then you come home and everything, all your hoodies smell like uh, smell like campfire smoke. That's exactly what this tastes like. Mm. Certainly not offensive in any way. Certainly I don't have a juice that would pair with this at all. This is a peach juice. I don't know why how peach is not going to pair with a Smaug Stout. Nope. Peach does not pair with a Smaug Stout. Hmm. This is a very disorienting uh, feeling. A very disorienting flavor to have that heavy, heavy dense smoky flavor um with like a like a little bit of chili spiciness on the finish i want to try this i just want to try this one more time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay smaug stout wow that was uh that was really interesting like i said i picked that up at world market i think it was like five bucks five or six bucks for that smaug stout not ridiculous um I do still owe everybody, so I can still feel the smokiness, like, in my jowls. It's making my mouth water. I still do owe everybody uh, a, a beer shopping trip, which I am hopefully going to do... Nope. Next week? Uh, maybe next week we'll go beer shopping. Um, this weekend, um, there's the SoCal Vape Expo, which I'm going to be attending. The weekend after that... Vapor Slam, which I'm going to be attending in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. The roast of Grim Green. It's going to be silly. And I said this somewhere, and I don't remember where I said it. But during the... Apologize. Sorry, Sheik. Sorry, Sheik. During the roast, if anybody tries to teabag me, I'm just coming out swinging. I'm going to throw some haymakers and knock some people out because I don't need balls on me. It's weird enough. It's bad enough that I'm going to get roasted. I don't want balls on me. Vapor Joe, if you're watching this and you tell anybody to teabag me, I know you're bigger than me. I will sweep the leg. Okay? I will throw a haymaker in your general direction. I don't want any fucking balls on me. Now, now that that's said, wow, I got a little worked up there. Let's do some freaking shout outs. So I want to give a shout out. To a fellow named uh, Mind Divided, he sent me a uh, he sent me uh, a link to a website called Vapipedia. Vapipedia. No, no, I'm sorry, it's not Vapipedia. What am I doing? It's Wikivapia, and I'll post a link in the description. But it's basically a, an online Wikipedia style encyclopedia of vaping uh, on the front page looks a lot like a uh, Wikipedia he has vaping etiquette mech mod maintenance traveling with your vape gear and introduction introduction to e-liquid um, if I click on a random page let's go to a random page there's a whole page for the smokes tech RSST has uh, the type of atomizer it is the tank size the diameter the materials Summary, airflow, refilling. Uh, let's click on another random page. It's basically Wikipedia. Uh, E-Leaf iStick may refer to the iStick models produced by E-Leaf. Refer to the navigation box below to see the available models. So you can click on the iStick 50 watt. Yep, it has a picture of it. Battery with a 510 connector, spring connection. It has the form factor, capacity, voltage, wattage features, usage. This is very, very, very cool. Uh, this is very, very, very cool. I think this is really cool, uh, if I didn't mention that already. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it looks like it's growing. It's got a bunch of products in there. I wonder if I can search for... Uh, no, no results for Ruby Roo. Sorry, sorry Ruby Roo. Are there any research, are there any search results for Grim Green? No, are there any search results for P. Basardo? Nope. Are there any search results for Casa? 
nothing for Casa. So this seems to be hardware related. Um, I'd like to see more vaping stuff in there. I'd like to see the vaping militia in there. I'd like to see Casa in there. I'd like to see, uh, well, obviously I'd like to see Grim Green in there, but I'll post a link in the description uh, to the Wiki Vapia. Thank you, Mind Divided, for sending that my way. Additionally, I want to give a shout out to a guy named Michael Scott. So uh, no relation, I'm assuming, to the character from The Office, but he sent me a link <laughs> to a company called Vapeware.com. V A P R Ware.com. Vaporware.com. And it, just click there right now while I drink some more Smaug Stout. Vaporware.com. It is a hoodie where the uh, the uh, the string on the hoodie is a tube, and on one side you hook up your e-cig, and on the other side you inhale through it. And I don't understand the whole point of it. Maybe it's to be more discreet. Um, it looks ridiculous uh slide inside the only garment to integrate high quality custom de custom designed activewear and discreet functionality each vaporware hoodie is engineered with an inconspicuous hood lace concealing a dlo3 e-cig vape system oh oh it has its own vape system uh to smoke your favorite medium e-juice oil or wax coming soon a dry herb model shred the gnar jam with the band chill with your crew and rep with the latest trend first of all good god if you're a company and you use the sentence shred the gnar i instantly hate you uh i i hate you as a person and i hate you as a company Shred the gnar, rep the latest trend, vaporware. This is uh, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It uh, is literally the dumbest thing I've never I've ever seen. I would never wear it. Uh, I the hoodies look terribly uncomfortable. Additionally, um, I don't get it. You don't. Why do you need to? have a tube that goes around your neck to vape through why don't you just vape i don't know i don't get it uh but yeah michael scott michael scott sent me vaporware and uh <laughs> it is so dumb it is so dumb but i'll post a link in the description to where you can check it out if you want to um Last shout out I want to do is a guy named Ivan. Uh, he emailed me and said, Hey Nick, we're faced with big problems here in Denmark. There has been a law proposed that everything we know about vaping is illegal. All the vape shops will go bankrupt since all products must be approved and will cost about 30,000 DKR, about 4,000 US dollars per product to get approved. All our e-cigs will be illegal. Uh, they are being forced to use leak-free cigalikes. Uh, those who get smokers back onto analogs. Could you give us a shout out uh, and get your subs to give us in Denmark somewhat support? You will get more information since about you 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 will get more information about how we will do it. We will talk about the booming Twitter with a specific hashtag. Uh, thank you to read this. I hope you will help. Uh, yes. Uh, I, Ivan, I don't know what we can do uh, for Denmark. Um, I don't know what we... <laughs> there's a lot of uh, legislation and stuff happening kind of all over the place. I just read about Portland, Oregon, where there's, uh, you know, vaping in the Clean Air Act with no exemption for vape shops. Uh, additionally, there's state and local governments um, and federal uh, coming down all over the place on vaping uh, in the United States. And... There are hopefully vapors in Denmark who may be able to help out. I don't know how Denmark works. I don't know how the government or regulatory system works. I don't know how the committees work. I don't know if there's uh, any sort of grassroots organization like Kassar, the vaping militia over in Denmark. 
Uh, but it's uh, that sounds. I mean, that sounds truly awful. Obviously, I'm a freedom guy, and I, I don't like to see people's freedoms being pulled away from them, uh, regardless of whether or not that's in the United States or in Denmark. But yes, Ivan, uh, I'm obviously yeah. I mean, we'll help out as much as we can. I don't know how we can help out, but. Uh, if, uh, if anybody's interested, dig into it a little bit more about vaping in Denmark. Um, he didn't give me any links or anything to follow or, uh, you know, what Twitter specific hashtag they're going to do. But yes, Ivan, absolutely. Obviously, you have the support of every vapor uh, around and every vapor, hopefully in Denmark. Um, I'm not sure how many vapors in Denmark actually watch my videos, but hopefully we can... Uh, Hopefully we can help out. Hopefully we get them uh, motivated to uh, motivated to help out there in uh, there in Denmark. I did have one more shout out that I wanted to do, and I think I'm wearing my Drip Club hat for a reason because the Drip Club has started a fantastic blog, and I didn't realize it, but this is a fantastic blog. Um, I'll post a link to it in the description. I posted this on Facebook. It's called The Daily Drip. It's called blog.thedripclub.com. And they have a great article uh, about can we stop pretending that e-cigarettes are being marketed to children? And there's some not safe for work content within this article. There's Asian men in underwear and blonde women with pink panties on and blood and weird and that girl's panties says let's fuck and then there's a topless girl and her ass and then a naked guy it is a fantastic article not just for the eye candy but it really really uh <laughs> wow it really is uh offensive on every level and uh it's it gets a across a great point should we actually worry about children vaping though while I think it's fairly obvious that some crummy bootleg Hello Kitty vaporizers and fruit flavored e liquids are being marketed to adults because adults like those things, there are simple measures we should take to prevent electronic cigarettes from harming children and teenagers. Nearly everyone in the industry disports, supports mandatory childproof caps on e liquid because none of us want to see accidental poisonings of any sort. Uh, and this is a simple way to make them less likely. Beyond that, though, should we worry about the trends in teen e cigarette use? The fact the facts we have so far have been misinterpreted ad nauseum. Uh, it's a fantastic article, and I would recommend checking out this blog. Uh, I mean, I, I, I love it. I think it's uh, – I, I like the Drip Club. I'm biased uh, towards the Drip Club, obviously. But uh, their Daily Drip blog is just fantastic, and I'll post a link to that in the description show. Shout-outs to them. Additionally, I do want to give a shout-out to uh, – v4p3r.com uh it's vapor.com v43pr.com i'll post a link in the description he's got a great blog and he approached me about doing an interview and uh just 10 quick questions and so i said yeah just send them over and i'll i will try to answer them um and then uh he, he published it uh recently actually yesterday actually sit down with grim green uh and it's a pretty cool interview and he's done interviews with other you know, people, uh, I think he did an interview with Big Lou, East Coast. Um, he's got Vaping 101, Advocacy. It's just a, it's a really cool blog. And, uh, you know, obviously I have my own GrimGreen.com vaping blog that I update as much as I possibly can. But, uh, you know, I can't, I'm just, I'm just one guy. I, uh, I am doing everything of my own stuff. So everything that happens on GrimGreen.com is done by me. Everything in my videos is done by me. All of my answer emails are answered by me. All of my comments are answered by me. All of the t-shirts and graphics and traveling and vape meets and everything is just done by me. I'm just one guy. And so I don't get the opportunity to update my website as often as I would like. When I find really cool stuff, absolutely I will post it as well as, you know, there's an archive of my videos and my vlogs and stuff on there. But... Uh, but there are a lot of other very cool blogs out there. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to post a link in the description. But shout out to uh, vapor.com, v43pr.com. It's an interesting URL. I know he was going for vapor.com, but uh, he went with v4p3r. v4p3r.com, and I'll post a link in the description. Um, we're 30 minutes in. We've talked about beer. We talked about indoor smokers, Raven Vapes, and we did some shout outs. I believe now it's time for a couple first impressions. 
I apologize. I, I'm losing light left and right. I have, uh, I'm relying on this big window for my light, and it's very, very overcast today here in generally sunny Southern California. The weather's beautiful outside, but it is overcast, so the light, uh, the light kind of keeps changing and getting darker and lighter, so I'm trying to see. Yeah, I mean, I guess that looks okay. First thing I want to talk about, this thing is ridiculous. Okay, so this is the, called the Mini Deck 2, and... Uh, this came to me via, this is attached, you put your 510 there to do all your building, right? It comes with an ohm meter that I believe reads down to the tenth, or the hundredth, or the tenth rather. Has two little tins for putting screws and cotton and whatever else you want. It comes with a full set of screwdrivers and each screwdriver has its own specific hole that it goes into and they all stay there. See how all the screwdrivers are down there? And then on this side, it comes with all of this stuff. Tweezers, Allen keys, pliers, wire cutters. These are the good wire cutters too. Um, one of the things that's most fascinating to me about this is these cartridges in here. Now I'm not gonna show you, you're gonna see, but see all these circles right here? Those hold thousand foot spools of canthal and I don't have any 1,000 foot spools of canthal yet I'm gonna order some so I can use this but you put your canthal in this little cartridge you take these screws out the cartridge comes out you load your canthal in there and then it comes out of this little hole right here there's a little black hole above this screw and you can label it you can say this is 24 gauge 26 gauge 20 22 this is you know 20 gauge hot wire this is 24 gauge diamond wire and it holds your canthal together because my number one complaint in the fucking world with vaping are those stupid canthal spools that unravel like if you if you mess up a little bit if you're like, oh, okay, I got my canthal, I'll clip it off, I'll tuck it in, and then it doesn't tuck in, and it goes, and canthal everywhere. This holds your canthal in a spring-loaded little chamber, and you can feed it right out the front, right out this little hole, so you can pull out as much as you need and just clip it. And this little hole in here holds your canthal together. And you pull out some more, and you clip it, and this little thing holds your canthal together. I think that's amazing. Uh, I think that's worth the price of admission alone. It does come with this custom uh, little doodad right here. Do you see this? It kind of looks like, I don't know, a coffee grinder or an organ grinder. There's two holes in it. And what this is for is for building coils. So you can run your coil through there, through the little holes, hold it with the pliers on one end and turn it. And you can build like a twisted coil. You could use this to build Clapton's. You could use this to build regular coils. And that's attached on there. And it's just a little simple little, you know, hands crank. And you can turn out twisted coils or Clapton coils or build whatever coils uh, you want on here. I think it's pretty, I think it's kind of amazing. Um, I think this is kind of insane. It doesn't have a huge footprint. I haven't been leaving it on my desk. I have a little shelf right here that I've been putting it on. But apart from, you know, the canthal and the cotton, this is everything you need. Tweezers to start uh, to start building and actually have like a productive building workstation. You can put your atomizer here and build on it. You have your ohm checker right here and you have a place to put uh lost screws or you know strands of cotton or wads of cotton and you have all your canthal here it's enough for one two three four five six different kinds of canthal or wire you have to buy them in thousand foot spools though so if you can get a thousand feet of, of hot wire then more power to you but it, it kind of is all cool and self-contained it's kind of crazy like i said it does have i'm going to put this back over here does have a high asking price um, I think he's selling them for $379 plus shipping um, but it comes with the building base itself uh, needle nose shears rechargeable black ohm meter crescent plier uh, nipper set seven piece screwdriver set two aluminum storage canisters two allen wrenches CNC machined coil winder billet aluminum docking plate for tanks and drip tips 90 degree 
indexable stainless steel post, six cassettes of, oh, 600 foot wire management system, 600 feet. So they need you need 600 foot spools, not 1,000 foot spools. It's a good thing I didn't buy any campfell last night. Coil winder, 2.5 millimeter mandrel supplied stock, other diameters available upon request at an additional cost. Cassette wire management system holds 600 feet of four inch, uh, 100 foot reels from kidneypuncher.com. Dispenses from the front of the unit. No more messy wire reels laying around. I think it's great. Uh, I think it's cool. I think it's very, very cool. It's really expensive. I mean, that's a lot. It's a lot of money, but I feel like you're getting a lot too. Um, I'll post a link in the description. Obviously, the decision is yours to make in the end. Um, it might show up on in video in the future, like when I get some 600-foot spools of Canthal. Um, I'm not sure I would do, I'm not gonna do a full review on it, but uh, but like I said, it's gonna get mentioned uh, quite a bit in the future, and that comes from dsvapeaccessories.com. High asking price, but you do uh, you do get a lot. I'm interested to see how functional it will be as far as like putting the canthal in there and actually using it. He gave me a short demo at the Oregon Vapors Festival, and I was kind of amazed. I'm like, wow, that's really great. You just pull out the amount of canthal you want, you cut it off, and then this little nubbin just holds it for you. I think it's very, very cool. Uh, it just looks very, very cool as well. But uh, like I said, I'll post a link in the description uh, as well. I do have one more first impressions to do. One more first impressions, and this is on a mech mod, and then we're gonna talk about, uh, Matt did a great video about hybrid connections, so I thought I would throw in my two cents as well. This mod comes to me from Shadow Vapor, and I don't know the name of it, I'm just calling it the Shadow Vapor right now. So this is kind of like a big, Le Petit. If you've ever seen the Le Petit mods, it uses kind of the same thing. The atomizer is recessed. So the atomizer screws down into the mod. So if you look in here, you can kind of see the threads down there and then there's a lip that kind of comes up. It's not 22 millimeters around, but it works with 22 millimeter around atomizers. And this is a hybrid connection on here, meaning that your atomizer is making direct contact with your battery. And I'm, I'm sure I have said this in at least a bajillion and a half freaking videos, okay? Make sure when you're using hybrid style devices, so when I talked about the tugboat, when your atomizer is touching your battery, you have to, have to, have to make sure that your 510 connection is protruding from the bottom of your atomizer. Things like the Aeolus, things like the Tugboat version two, they will work fantastic. Other things like the Aspire Nautilus, no, those aren't protruding enough. You can't use those on a hybrid connection. What it happens is if your center 510 post on your atomizer isn't touching your battery, let's say the housing around your atomizer is touching your battery, you will straight up hard short your battery and it will vent and it will, I mean, it has the possibility to vent toxic gases. I don't like using the word explode, but it could explode. And the top cap in this is a hybrid top cap. So this is the top cap right here. It's just a hole. And you screw this onto your atomizer like this. And I know looking at this tugboat version two, that the bottom pin I'm gonna zoom in because I, I wanna be that guy because I wanna communicate this to you in a reasonable uh, language. I know for sure, do you see how that 510 connection is coming out of the bottom? There's no possibility of that battery touching anything else other than that protruding 510. So let's look at the, uh, the Mako does not yeah, the Mako does a little bit. See how the bottom sticks out on the Mako there? Same thing, the 510 connection needs to stick out. The Aeolus has a very, very long 510 connection. In fact, most of the atomizers I have in front of me have a very, very long 510 connection. But you just, you have to make sure there's certain tanks, there's certain atomizers out there that will not, uh, that will not reach down there. So this goes in to the mod grabs those threads and it screws down. Just like that. That's the only adjustment you're making. There's no adjusting for battery rattle. That's it. Just like that and you end up with a dinky little mod. It's even shorter than the Petri. And I thought the Petri was really small by dot mod right here. 
It's shorter. It's shorter than the Petri, but it's an 18650 mod. Hits, I mean, it's a, it's a hybrid mod, so it hits really, really well. That pineapple cake, the pineapple cake might actually pair okay with the, uh, with the Smaug Stout. Let's give that a try. Mm -hmm. Wow, not really bad at all. It's great. It's a great vape. Uh, this is how I've been using it. Tugboat version 2 with that uh, clear top cap on there. The Shadow Vapor Mech Mod, uh, he engraved Grim Green on there, which is always, which is always kind of cool. And so the bottom is even a little bit more interesting. So I'm just going to unscrew this just a little bit. The bottom doesn't have any threads. It just has these like hooks, right? Man, that is so strange. I want to get up close so you can see this. I'm going to be that guy. I'm losing light. Do you see this? See that little hook right there and that little hook right there and it's got an o-ring on it now the inside has little places to catch those hooks so it's not it doesn't screw in what happens is you line up those holes you line up those little you know with the with the cap and you push it in and you twist it and now your bottom cap is secure on there and then you twist it the other way and it pulls off. It's got those little tabs and those little channels for the tabs to travel into. So there's no threads on the bottom. There's no threads on the bottom and the only adjustment you do is in the top. You just screw your atomizer down and that's it. And it's snug and secure on there. I, uh, I've kind of been loving this little mech mod right now. It's been great. Uh, it's been a great vape. And, uh, you know, obviously I will report back. Oh, I have a rogue screwdriver here. Obviously I will report back with how it, uh, with how it performs in the real world when I take it out and about. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll bring this to the SoCal Vape Expo just, just for fun. Just a, just a little mech mod with me. I think that would be cool. Um, but yeah, obviously I'll report back with how it goes. It is, uh, it is brass. And so I know eventually it's going to start getting darker because of my hand grease and it's already starting to smell like a brass mod. It's already starting to smell like a brass mod, um, but it is what it is uh, and it is the shadow vapor. Like I said, I'll report back later with how it's going, but so far it's been pretty fantastic. And there was a guy who commented recently and uh, again, let's avoid some drama. There was a guy who commented recently who was kind of uh, ragging on the fact that we're taking such big toots and letting out so much vapor. He's like, there's no way that's enjoyable. He's like, I see your face when you vape. It looks like you're about to cry. There's no way that's enjoyable. And uh, to him, I say poppycock because it is completely enjoyable. I don't, when I vape, does it look like I'm gonna cry after I exhale? No, it doesn't, okay? I have a very satisfied look on my face. That face that you're seeing is the look of satisfaction because, oh yeah, that vapor just tastes delicious. That vapor just feels fantastic. So yes, I don't think it's right and I don't think it's okay to rag on someone just for the way they vape, you know what I mean? It's like the cloud comp crew and people. I don't do cloud comps, but if they wanna do it, more power to them. There's people who only vape K-Funds or Clearomizers. If that's how they want to vape, then more power to them. I vape uh, a billion different ways. So come on. I think uh, I think saying that there's no way that that's enjoyable, I think that's a, I think that's pretty, I think that's a pretty uh, ignorant uh, thing to say. So here, have some Smaug wings. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. So we got through some first impressions. What I want to do right now, what do I want to do right now? I think I want to retro vape right now. Also, I don't know what this, I don't know what this finger motion is. Apparently this finger motion means retro vaping. So 
Retro vaping. I don't know what that finger motion means. Um, I'm going to need to grab an atomizer. Um, quick update on my Aeolus atomizer. Uh, I had an uh, issue with the center pin spinning. Totally fixed it. No big deal. Uh, you just have to kind of reset it and then re-screw the screw in the bottom. Um, I'm hoping... I'm hoping that I can get this Aeolus Atomizer to work on this mod. So this mod that I want to talk about for retro vaping, does anybody recognize this? Maybe, maybe not. This is called the Helix. And I first, I first tried the Helix at the St. Louis Vape Fest, which is in August of 2010. August of 2010. Now the Helix was and is, continues to be, a 26650 mod. This is the first 26650 mod. Everyone was saying, oh, 2014, that's the year of the 26650 mod. I hate to break it to you. We had 26650 mods back in 2010. When the Helix finally came out, uh, it was expensive, and I bought one because I wanted one because it was the first 26650 mod. And back then, all we had was low-resistance atomizers. We didn't have rebuildables, but this had a mechanical switch on the inside that I believe that I believe will still work. It doesn't have a spring-loaded 510 connection or anything like that, but I'm gonna put a 26650 atomizer, or atomizer, 26650 battery in here. And the Helix was, I believe it was made out of aluminum because it's incredibly light. It's incredibly light. And I'm hoping that I can get this Aeolus atomizer to make a connection on there. It works. Are you kidding me? It works. Are you kidding me? That's amazing. Uh, where's my juice? Ugh. I can't believe this works. I'm gonna dump some juice in here. All right, Aeolus Atomizer. Aeolus Atomizer on the Helix. And I'll post a link in the description like I always do to my original Helix video. Um, I don't know the date that I actually uploaded that. Oh, I don't know why I said uploaded so weird. Uploaded that. Creator, okay, let's search, let's just search YouTube for the Helix mod. Nope, and that's, so let's go Helix mod Cisco. Uh, Pop reviews the Helix, Steel Jan reviews the Helix. There is another Helix by Stig out there. Philly Vape Fest 2011 Helix First Impressions. So that's when I bought it. So I first tried it in August of 2010 and then it didn't come out until 2011. Uh, I have my first impressions of it at the Philly Vape Fest in 2011. Oh, that is crazy. When was the Philly Vape Fest? So I uploaded this video March 26, 2011 at the Philly Vape Fest. It's my first impressions of the Helix. Keep in mind this is a 26650 mech mod in the days before rebuildable atomizers, but I'm currently walking, walking? Rocking my newest rebuildable atomizer, the Brass Aeolus, on this 26650 mech mod. Crazy. That is crazy. I can't believe it still works. It's a mechanical switch in there. It's not wired in any way. And when I press the button, it hits. I mean, it hits like a mech mod. It feels like there's a severe voltage drop on here. But once again, this was back in a time when voltage drop wasn't a concern. It's not something, <laughs> it's not something we actually talked about. It wasn't, it wasn't a thing that existed. I can't believe it's working. It does feel like it has a pretty severe fucking voltage drop on there. And the reason I'm surprised it's working is because this did not have a spring-loaded 510 connection. And if you look in the top cap, or you look in where the 510 is, and I'm gonna zoom in again, you can see that there's a juice well in there, and then there's a 510 even lower. So I had to try to find a 510 atomizer that could get past that juice well and somehow get down there to make, a, to make a connection. And this Aeolus has an extraordinarily long center post. And so I was like, if something's gonna work on this Helix, it's gonna be the Aeolus. 
Uh, but like I said, I bought this. Uh, I bought this atomizer. Uh, I bought this mod, the Helix, online from eLiquid Planet because they were the only ones carrying it. And I told, I told, uh, I told Josh from eLiquid Planet. I said, I'm going to buy a Helix. Just uh, bring it to Vape Fest, and I'll pick it up from you there. You don't have to ship it to me. You don't have to ship it to me. I'll just pick it up there. So I remember, very specifically when he brought out all these helixes and they came in black and stainless steel, they came in black and chrome. And I got the chrome, of course, which shows, you know, scratches like you can't imagine. And I remember he brought it out and it was just like, <sighs> so I ran to other vendors. I ran over to Bruce at Clouds of Vapor and I bought some 26650 batteries and I bought a charger from him. And I threw the 26650 batteries on the charger and I set my helix down on the table and I left for dinner. And the whole time I'm at dinner, I'm thinking, ooh, I want those 26650 batteries to be charged so bad. And I got back from dinner like two hours later, and they were not charged. And Josh was telling me, oh, well, you know, there's, a, there's an insert where you can use an 18650 battery in there. And I was like, no. I want my first Helix experience to be with a fully charged 26650 battery. I don't want to cheapen my first Helix experience by just sticking an 18650 in there because I've vaped on 18650 batteries. I have not vaped on a 26650 battery. And so a couple hours later, I'm vaping, I'm vaping, and I keep going back to the table to check on those batteries. I come around the corner and I see that they're both green and it was like angels singing you know what I mean so I pulled the batteries off I put it in there I put a 1.5 ohm low resistance atomizer on here and I just vaped my freaking face off I don't remember how much I paid for this I think it was like 160 160 170 uh, uh, I can't I don't even there of course they're not for sale anymore because there's a new um, there's a new uh, there's a new mod called the Helix out there, so you can't just search even search like Helix eSig mod. 120 bucks. I uh, I paid 120 dollars for it, and I'll post a link in the description to the eCigarette mods database, which used to be like the database uh, for every mod possible, um, and now it's it's very very outdated. But they still carry. Uh, eliquidplanet.com oh that's right they don't sell the helix anymore on eliquidplanet.com oh, I'll post a link in the description anyway to eliquidplanet.com because that's where I originally uh, purchased it and yep the helix is designed and manufactured by the famous modder Cisco helix is powered by the monster 26650 battery which has a capacity of 4000 milliamp hour no other mod uses this battery yet no other mod this was the first 26650 battery and uh, and I own it and it actually still works and I'm using it with a 0 0.2 ohm Aeolus atomizer. Uh, I don't want to say that I'm the first person to use the Helix in this manner, but I mean, I could. There's a very good chance I could be the first person to use the Helix with a rebuildable. I can't believe it's still working. It does have a pretty severe voltage drop. It's not as powerful. I was rocking the Aeolus on the 26650 Congestus, and uh, it's just not hitting the same. But it is working, and I am amazed. I am amazed that it is still working. I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to post a picture of this on Instagram uh, as soon as I'm done shooting because I think it's fantastic. But yeah, I, I paid 120 bucks for it. Ended up buying batteries. Um, this was innovative uh, at the time. Back in 2010, 2011, um, there wasn't a 26650 mod. And I remember hearing about the Helix. Cisco has a 26650, uh, you know, mod out there. It's a mech mod, 26650. Do you even know what a 26650 is? And everybody was like, oh, 26650, that's like, that's like the biggest battery around. Oh, man, that's going to be amazing. Or, oh, man, no, that's going to be way too big. I would never use a 26650 mod. That is too big. The silver bullet's big enough. But it came out, came out stomping uh, the Helix the Helix was awesome. I used it. Uh, I used it 
like a crazy person. I just used it like you can't imagine. And I remember very vividly on one of my Vape Fest videos, I was giving Helix, I was giving Cisco a bunch of shit because the Helix hadn't come out yet. Um, I had talked about it in a previous video and I told everybody, oh yeah, it's coming out in September. It did not come out for another like six or seven months. Um, and I remember giving, I remember giving Cisco a bunch of shit and I, I miss that guy. I want to talk to him again, but uh, yeah. Helix, the first 26650 mod. This is the first 26650 mod, and I'm vaping it with an Aeolus Atomizer. O game is weak ass today. So, yeah, there you go. That is a. Uh, that is crazy. That is the, uh, that's the Helix. And it was the bomb back in the day, man. Um, so what I want to do, uh, what I want to do to wrap this vlog up is talk about some music. All right. Uh, for any of those, uh, any, what? For anybody wondering, the music that I use in my music time intro uh, is an artist named Angel Vivaldi. Um, and it's just, uh, cool like instrumental proggy shit um i really like it i think he's kind of pretentious and he dresses like a weirdo person but uh his music is really really good um look at that head ruby roo yeah hmm you gotta drink through it like a man right mm. so music um once again, I am on Spotify. If you want to see everything I'm listening to, I'm gonna try to uh, I'm gonna try to rock some music. So the first band that I want to talk about is uh, uh, one of my one of my favorite bands of all time. I actually wore their shirt not too long ago in a video, but it's a band called Enslaved, and they have no less than like 15 albums. And their new one, their new album, uh, I can't even pronounce. Uh, the name of it, I'm assuming it's in Norwegian. It's R I I T I I R, writer. R I I T I I R. That makes no sense. But Enslaved was, um, when Enslaved first started out, they were very much like a straight up black metal band. And they kind of veered off of that course to a more like Viking ish, uh, Viking ish metal. Not quite like a Monomarth, but. Very Viking uh, rooted, no corpse paint or anything like that. And this is going to be really loud, so I apologize. Headphone users, rest in peace. Okay, I'm going to turn it down. I don't know how loud that's going to be on camera, so I apologize. Yeah, but this song is called Roots of the Mountain, and it's on their new album. And uh, obviously, as always, I'll post a link in the description. To the YouTube video as well as add it to my new uh, as uh, add it, I have a vlog music bands playlist on my main YouTube page, um, which is basically every band I've ever featured uh, or talked about on the vlog. But yeah, Enslaved. This is a this is kind of a a big departure from them. It's kind of like more black metal-y than they've ever been. Oh, it's good. Listen to him sing. Anyway, uh, I don't want to get in trouble with YouTube by playing too much music, but I will post a link in the description to where you can check out uh, Enslaved Roots of the Mountain. Uh, another band that I want to talk about is called Chapel of Disease, and I just added this to my new Rad Things playlist. But they came on, and again, it was one of those double takes where I was just sitting here answering emails, and it came on, and I'm rocking out to it, and I'm like, who is this? So I click over to Spotify, and I'm like, huh, Chapel of Disease. But they have a song called The Dreaming of the Flame, which is... I'm a big fan of the old school death metal, and this is very much that. Chapel of Disease, Dreaming of the Flame. And I don't know, I don't know anything about this band. His vocals kind of remind me a little bit of Obituary. 
Uh, I don't know anything about this band, Chapel of Disease. I don't know where they're from or what they do or what their what their deal is. Let's try to find them on Wikipedia. Chapel of Disease, death metal band, uh, formed in 2008. Where are they from? Doesn't even say where they're. Oh, they're from Germany. They're a German death metal band. Yeah. Great, great stuff. Chapel of Disease. It's kind of like that old school uh, death metal that I'm really, really into. I mean, all the time. There's a few things I go back and forth on. It's like, sometimes I just, I am in love with stoner rock. Sometimes I am just in love with black metal. But death metal, that old school death metal sound, I just never get tired of it. I just... I just want to listen to it all the time. If I have the chance between listening to anything and uh, and death metal, I, I will generally choose death metal. I just like I like that old school death metal sound. I think it's fantastic. And Chapel of Disease, they do it. They do it well. Um, last band I want to talk about is a band I've been listening to for a while. My good buddy Mark Moots turned me on to this band. They're called Ghost Brigade. And I'm going to try not to play too much of this because... They're kind of a popular band. They're getting more and more popular. Uh, their first two albums obviously were unbelievable. Um, then they released this last one, One With The Storm. And so this is a song called Stones and Pillars. And of course, a link. Obviously, I'll link to it uh, in the description as well as put it in my uh, in my vlog playlist. And of course, you can always follow that playlist on Spotify. And chances are, you'll see the songs that I've added. Those are just going to end up. Uh, those are just going to end up being in the next vlog. So it's kind of like a oh, it's kind of like a little bit of a sneak peek. It can be like oh, Grim added uh, you know, uh, Agalock to the new new cool rad new things playlist i bet that's going to be in the vlog but i do i listen to a fuck ton of music there's always music playing in my house now um i like to sit and answer emails and listen to music i like to sit and do graphics and photoshop and listen to music and so i haven't got to do that in a really long time um and so i i I've honestly been really enjoying just listening to music and music and music and music. I'll post a link in the description to where you can pick up, uh, where you can listen to all of these bands, Ghost Brigade, uh, Chapel of Disease, and of course the new Enslaved album. I think it's just, uh, I think it's just fantastic. Ghost Brigade just kills me. Their first album especially, just, it just slays me. So, so yeah, we've covered a lot, um... We did first impressions and shout outs. We talked about Rave and Vapes. Uh, we talked about indoor smokers. We talked about Smaug Stout. Um, we talked about music. I really don't want this vlog to run super, super long. I just want to say uh, once again, thank you, you know, for your support uh, over the years and during these weird times as well. Um, trying to move forward as business as usual. This weekend, I will be at the SoCal Vape Expo. Uh, very excited. I'll post a link in the description. Um, Week after that is Vapor Slam. I'm hoping to get to Vape Summit as well. Of course, we're doing VaporCon West in Reno. I'm actually going to try to make it back up to Reno uh, to support my good buddies in the Solution brand at the Silver State Tattoo and Art Festival. Um, I'm kind of just all over the place. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. It's it's crazy, but it's good. Uh, you know, uh, I said this on. Uh, where did I say this? I said this on Facebook, I believe, where, uh, you know that thing where you are, uh, you're at work and you're passing someone like in the hallway or in the lunchroom or something and you go, hey, what's going on? Or, hey, what's up? And they kind of begrudgingly reply, oh, just living the dream. I kind of feel like I get to say that now and mean it. Um, I am doing vaping full time and it's been my dream to do that. Uh, especially in the area that I'm in. Um, I've met amazing people. I've been to amazing shops and gone to amazing meets. And I just, uh, you know, it, they say if you are doing something you love, you never work a day in your life. I work sun up to sundown every single day, and I just love every second of it. Um, so, yes, thank you so much for the support, uh, as always. And, uh, yeah, a lot of cool stuff coming up. Still hanging in there with the format. MechMod Monday, RBA Tuesday, Wild Card Wednesday. Uh, hoping to have enough MechMods, RBAs, and Wild Cards to actually 
fill that schedule up. But uh, but yeah, otherwise things are moving forward like crazy. I got a Millennium Falcon. Yeah, it's just sitting here off camera. I was gonna try to uh, mount it on the wall up here, but I couldn't figure out a way to do it. So my Millennium Falcon just sits on my uh, little shelf here, which is. Uh, which is pretty great, of course. We always uh, we have Stuart, and I haven't mentioned Robin, but Robin's here uh, being an obnoxious twat, as always. I don't know where I'm going with this. Thank you so much for watching, everybody, and as always, let's keep on vaping. No, Helix. Working on my O's still, working on my O's. Nope. Someday I'm gonna do one and I'm gonna get to push it and do like a fucking jellyfish or the, oh, the rings of, oh, it's, Someday, someday. I'm going to get there. I'm going to catch up to you, Kylie. I'm going to catch up to you, Fresh Skater J. Nope. They're just, uh, they're weak. They're weak sticks. 